Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's a real exciting phone. It's the Samsung Galaxy Note, this time on AT&T. No more import version with a very high price, and you get LTE, too. We're going to take a look at it now. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note for AT&T, and once again, we're living large. We reviewed the international versions a couple of months ago, and happily, it's mostly unchanged from the international version, because that was certainly one of the best phones that we've seen yet on the market. What did AT&T change on this? They added LTE 4G, that's true 4G, for very fast data speeds, and they changed the CPU in their process. Now, they didn't just do that to be a pain in the neck. They did that because certain CPUs work with certain radio chipsets, as cellular radio chipsets, and the previous Note had the Exynos CPU made by Samsung, a super fast CPU, but they went with the Qualcomm chipset that interfaces nicely with LTE for better battery life and better radio performance. So 1.5 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU of the Adreno 220 graphics. So it's no slouch, so don't feel too bad if you buy this guy, because it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying the unlocked international version, which runs up to $700. Think of this as a cross between a tablet and a phone. At 5.3 inches, it's obviously a pretty big phone. You can see next to my hand the size of it, and I have pretty large hands. 5.3 inch display, 1280 by 800 pixels, so you're getting the same resolution here as you would on a 10 inch Android tablet. That's pretty impressive. Though the display is large, it's a very thin phone. Typical of Samsung, boy, they can make things thin. So you can see it's more pocketable than you might think. On the side here, this is the power button. Down here we have the removable digital pen. We'll talk about that in a minute. Micro USB port, microphone right here. This side you got your volume rocker, and up top we have the headphone jack and another microphone. The back is your usual Samsung plasticky back. It's not bad looking though, I have to say. And the phone's supposed to be available in either blue, which is really pretty close to black. It's very, very, very dark. And there's also a Galaxy Note in white. Here's your speaker grill right here. Large phone, you'd think you'd get a big speaker, not so much. It's not terribly loud, it's just okay. 8 megapixel camera here with LED flash and it has a front video camera that works with Skype and Google Talk for video chat. The front here we have four capacitive buttons. That's about the only physical change for the AT&T version instead of two buttons plus the clicky kind of center home button that the international version has. And I'm fine with the four capacitive buttons right here. They work well. And then I have the usual backlight timer up to six seconds if you have it on a timer. It can happen to be always on when the screen is on. There's your camera up here. Big earpiece. The phone runs Android OS 2.3.6 Gingerbread. Like the international version of the Note, we expect that this guy should see Ice Cream Sandwich, which will be neat because there's a lot more support for the pen. And speaking of the pen, we have a digital pen down here. Now this isn't just a capacitive stylus, which is very imprecise. This is actually an active digitizer. This is a Wacom digitizer that it uses. So you've got capacitive multi-touch here, and you have the very precise pen for Note input. There's an app called S-Note on this that Samsung makes, which we'll show you in a minute. It's exactly the same as the international version, and you can bring up the mini version just by pressing on the little button down here. It actually has a little button just like tablet PC pens. Press that, tap twice, and it brings up this handy-dandy little notes if you want to take notes. And you can see you can switch between text, paint mode, eraser, just a very basic version of the full application. So you can say... Now one thing I noticed compared to my international version is the, the stylus is a little bit off to the side of where I'm actually writing and don't know why that is. There is no utility for pen calibration like there is on a Windows tablet PC but that is what it is. It works fine actually for writing but if you're, if you're a graphic artist and you're doing some serious sketching with it, it might bother you a little bit. So you can either save your note or cancel if you decide you don't want to save it and that's the mini version of Note. And now we'll look at the full version, which is S-Memo. And you can see they have a bunch of sample notes here, and you can create your own by hitting the plus sign, and you can choose to make a text note as well if you wish. So we're going to create a new blank note here, and if you take a look at the tools, you can see you can choose between a pen, a oil brush, pencil, magic marker, all these colors, and if you want more colors you can tap down here and use an infinite slider to choose your colors as well. And there's your color picker right there. When you're done with that, when you're done choosing also your line width as well, you just close that and you can start drawing. And 
there's our awesome little flower pot. Now this is pressure sensitive, so right now I'm drawing very lightly, faint gray line, pressing heavily, fat black line. So pretty nice for drawing and sketching. If you watch our original video review of this, you've seen me go to town and draw some parrots and stuff like that with full colors. So that's what you can do, and this app is included. It's built in. Now on the international version of the Samsung App Store here, we actually saw more hand-picked apps that were pen-friendly, and this one is just pretty much some basic stuff here. You have some stuff like Sketch, that's the sketching portion of Evernote, but the rest of it is pretty much just generic application recommendations that will take you over to the Android market to actually download, but that's what that looks like. So that's sort of their pre-curated list of stuff. And it also works with the aforementioned sketch here. We've got that. We just downloaded that. And you can do the same thing, drawing and writing and taking notes. So for those of you who prefer Evernote and the sketch integration, there it is for you. Another thing you can do is press and hold that button and hold the screen, and it'll take a screenshot. And then you can draw on the screenshots. So say you're looking at a web page and you want to annotate it, that kind of thing. You can do that pretty easily. So now we're looking at sketch of it and we can write on it. See here's our drawing tools right here, eraser pen, cropping, all that kind of thing. So maybe I think the weather on Thursday is very important so I'm going to draw a note to it and say wow and then I can save it. Now obviously there's more useful business applications that you can actually write on top of a PDF, a Word document, that kind of thing. This does come with Polaris Office. It's the full version so you have access to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. Now you're not actually editing a Word file when you do this, but if you just want to annotate your annotations, so to speak, and say email them to somebody or something like that, you can do that. And in theory, you could actually sign a contract, for example. If somebody sends you a PDF or a Word contract, you can take a screenshot of it, sign that, and then shoot that off in an email. Now, as we said, 5.3 inches. Obviously, this is a big phone. It may be thin, but here it is next to the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket on the left, which is a 4.5 inch display phone that used to be considered large just not too long ago, folks. And you can see it's pretty well dwarfed by the Note. So if you're allergic to big phones, do keep that in mind, that the Samsung Galaxy Note is an awesome phone that has a lot of wonderful features on it, but it's also darn big. In terms of thickness, well, they're pretty close on thickness because the Galaxy Note's just that skinny. So they're just about the same. Now how about performance? I know a lot of you were thinking about staying with the Exynos International version even though it was more expensive if you could afford it because that 1.4 GHz Exynos used in the International Unlocked version, which by the way has HSPA plus 4G on AT&T, just no LTE. Well, yes, it is faster. On Quadrant, for example, we got 4088 on the Exynos Space International version, and this with the 1.5 GHz dual-core Snapdragon scores 3310. Now, 3310 is a pretty nice number. It's not that bad. It's just not as blisteringly, mind-bogglingly fast as the Exynos is in terms of benchmarks. Experientially, honestly, they feel equally as fast. I could not tell the difference. If you handed them both to me, I would not be able to tell by running games, applications, Adobe Flash. They feel just about the same. For on Tutu benchmark, they came in actually quite close, about 100 points higher for the Galaxy Note International version, so 6448 versus 6313. The Linpack multi-thread was, was one where the Exynos really is shown, though, and for the multi-thread test, it scored 105 versus 79 for this AT&T version here. And lastly, taking a look at the SunSpider JavaScript test, we scored 1920 with our international version, and that goes down to 2810 on the AT&T version. Probably some difference in optimizations for the web browser there, but again, experientially, it, you can't tell the difference, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. One thing that is nice is this LTE that we got here. You can see we have a pretty reasonably good signal here. We have about 85 dB signal, and I'll show you the speeds we've been getting on Ookla's speed test application. Bottom one down here is when we for force the phone onto HSPA Plus, and all the rest of these are on LTE. So you can see the lowest number was 19.8 megabit per second for download, and the highest was 26.9. That's very impressive, and we've got close to 11.12 for upload speed. So rocking fast, and this does have the mobile hotspot feature. You might figure, well, how much speed do I really need on the phone for downloading data? But if you're going to use this as a hotspot, boy, it makes a world of a difference. That's faster than a lot of folks' home broadband connection speeds. Call quality on the AT&T version of the 
Samsung Galaxy Note is excellent, just as it was with the international version. One of the best phones I've actually heard. That goes for both incoming and outgoing voice. Very clear, crisp, distinct, easy to understand, landline quality. Speaker phones just average on it. Again, as I mentioned, that little speaker in the back is not the most impressive thing in the world, but it's adequate, certainly, for using for speaker phone calls. And we've got a fairly standard dialer here, absolutely mega large numbers, very easy to dial. And the usual shortcuts here that you see in most Android phones for contacts, favorites, groups, call logs, that kind of thing. Now this is a big phone, 5.3 inch display, so how does this look if you hold it to your head? Well, there you go, kind of big. Unless you've got a lot of hair like me to hide the phone, people are probably going to notice it. But then again, I've been using one for more than a month and nobody ever stares at me when I hold this to my head. So not too bad. And it's fairly thin, so helps. So how about video playback? Obviously when you've got a phone with this gorgeous Super AMOLED HD display, you're going to want to watch some videos. And we've got Netflix fired up here, looking beautiful, super duper lovely color saturation. And it's fairly well color balanced too, unlike some Samsung Super AMOLED displays that are quite blue. The whites here are fairly white, which is good. Contrast is really, really strong too. We'll check out our Wallace and Gromit video here. Take it a little bit for it to buffer up. And we're doing this over AT&T's LTE network, by the way, right now, not Wi-Fi. And there we go. We buff it up, and it's nice and sharp. The speaker's set pretty high at this point, almost to maximum. I think I'll make my own porridge. Looks absolutely fantastic. Now, this is a nice way to watch movies on the go. So that's Netflix. YouTube player now. Won't be a problem certainly watching anything. And we'll check out a video that's featured on the front page. Looking absolutely great. Lovely. We've also got M Spot Movies here, or videos that's a partner with AT&T for selling you some streamable, downloadable movies. And lastly, we've got the standard gallery, and we've got videos, which is really just a front end to the gallery video player. And we're going to check out a 1080p video with 4.1 sound. Now, obviously, we're not going to get 4.1 sound out of the phone. But you could plug in an MHL con connector to an HD TV if you wanted to for higher quality experience, but we'll just show you how well it can handle 1080p video. Absolutely no problem. The phone is certainly fast enough for anything that you want to do. So there's 1080p video playback. Phone's running the latest version of TouchWiz, which I actually like pretty well. They don't mess with the uh, the looks of the phone too much, but they do add a lot of enhancements. For example, just like another Samsung phone's quick access to all your wireless radios here and any notifications. This list of applications are customizable. You can hit edit right here and change which ones are down there. And in fact, if you're in the application drawer, say you want to create folders or something like that or rearrange these guys, once again, you can just hit edit. And you can grab these and move them around wherever you see fit, drag one on top of another to create a folder, which is pretty cool. And you just have to remember to hit save when you're done. In terms of software that's on here, yes, there is some AT&T bloatware, and then there's the usual Samsung stuff. You've got Keys Air, that's for syncing over Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you can plug this guy in over USB, and it can work either as a keys device with MTP protocol, or you can switch it to mass storage mode for especially useful for you Mac users. We've got a voice recorder over here, the S Memo we already took a look at, standard Google applications like navigation, YouTube player, maps, Gmail, email, all here. Full version of Polaris Office to read, write, and edit MS Office documents. And then we've got AT&T apps, their pervasive square barcode scanner, which is actually kind of handy, AT&T Family Maps, AT&T Navigator, AT&T Ready to Go. And their live TV, which is streaming Moby TV, which is kind of a cool service. It's 10 bucks a month, and we would show you, but 
that service is not ready yet because the phone has not launched. It'll be available in stores by February 19th, 2012. Of course, we've got AT&T's Yellow Pages Mobile, also inescapable, and their account manager, and they preload Quick Light for video chat, but you can also use Google Talk or Skype if you want. Now we're testing out gaming with Raging Thunder 2, accelerometer-based game. Obviously plays very fast, very smooth, not driving too well here right now, but plays perfectly well. And again, the large screen is just really nice when you're gaming. The phone has 16 gigs of internal storage, of which almost 11 gigs are free for your use. There's a gig of RAM as well inside, and we'll take a look at the micro SD card slot. Now to take this off, again, it's just like the international version. There's a little pry point there, and you just rip off the fairly thin cover here. And you've got a 2500 milliamp battery there, which really helps because this has got a big screen, a fast CPU, and LTE. So far, battery life hasn't been too bad. It hasn't been really any worse than my Skyrocket. Those extra milliamps really do help. Here's your micro SD card slot right here. Yes, you do have to pull the battery out to insert and remove the card. And a card is not included since there's a pretty good amount of built-in storage space. And that's your SIM card slot right there. Here's your little chrome speaker grill and a better view of the 8 megapixel camera. The Samsung Galaxy Note has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. It's pretty neat to see dual band in a phone and it has the usual Bluetooth and the GPS with GLONASS. It works pretty well. In fact, it works very well. The phone has an 8 megapixel camera and interface is pretty much like all the other recent Samsung phones. We'll put our sickly bezel plan up here. So use it for a view phone and shot speeds pretty quick. Shutter sound is quite loud. Of course, you can adjust that. And then you've got your controls over here for settings and stuff like that. Nice transparent overlay so you can still see your scene back there. So there's plenty of settings to play with as well. And it can also shoot 1080p video. Image quality is excellent, as we come to expect from Samsung's higher-end Android smartphones. And video quality is also quite good. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note on AT&T. It's going to be available by February 19th in stores, and it's $299 with contracts, a bit more than their other higher-end LTE phones, but, well, you're getting a lot of phone for your money, literally and figuratively, and it's real easy to recommend this phone. I've been using the International Galaxy Note for well over a month now, and I absolutely love the phone, and it's really hard to turn down having faster LTE, too, if you're in an LTE area or one that's going to get LTE coverage soon. And AT&T has been aggressively expanding their LTE network. It doesn't have nearly the footprint of Verizon's yet, but it is growing. Speeds with the dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU are just fine by me. And with the Adreno 220 graphics, good for gaming. It's great for video playback. Sure, it's not as mind-boggling fast as the Exynos on paper, but it's certainly, I think, good enough for most folks out there. Call quality is excellent. Yeah, the phone is big to hold to your head, though, obviously, and large to hold in your hand, and that's the one caveat I have here. If you can, go check it out in the store to see the size for yourself. And if, if you're not into large phones, that could be a consideration. However, if you don't mind that, or you're looking to maybe replace your 7-inch tablet and your phone at the same time, this guy can do double duty quite well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.